Conservative MP and Deputy Chairman of the Eurosceptic European Research Group, Marc Francois. Thank you very much for coming along and bearing with us as I take our viewers through all those amendments coming thick and fast. And that certainly poses big problems for Boris Johnson, doesn't it? One of the great pleasures when we leave the European Union is this idiot behind me is going to have to get a proper job. That's another great reason for passing this bill. But well, it's D as I said last week, he's entitled to protest. You're entitled to be heard. Yeah, well, it would be nice to be heard, actually. We shall Today try is D minus nine. If Parliament approves this bill, in nine days' time, we leave the European Union. We honour the result of the referendum. It's now down to my colleagues in the House of Commons. I hope very much to pass this, and in nine days, we'll be living in a free country. Is it honouring the referendum if MPs who represent both uh, constituencies that voted to leave and constituencies that voted to remain, if they haven't had a chance to give this deal proper scrutiny, doesn't that in effect become well, anti-democratic? We, we've been debating this for three years. Everybody knows what's in the treaty. The treaty came out well over a year ago. It's changed a bit because the Prime Minister brilliantly got rid of the backstop, which was the major problem, and he's also changed the political declaration so we can eventually end up with a free trade deal, which is what many of us have wanted for years. We've had three years discussing this. Now, not, not everybody agrees that's brilliant. Well, well, the, the well, DUP, well, okay, but for example. We've had more than enough time to discuss this. If this means some MPs have to work till beyond midnight. I don't think the public are going to cry themselves to sleep about that. A lot but of people in this country work nights. Well, so shall we. Uh, th this is incredibly detailed, though. In any other circumstances, would you really say that three days until the end of business on Thursday was enough? Yes, the broad, uh, the broad principles, absolutely, I agree with you, have been debated for a long time. But the legal, the technical detail that is in well, there this is hasn't, This has is it. what's called an implementing bill. Because, because the withdrawal agreement is a treaty, because it's a treaty, we have to ratify it in an act of parliament. That's our why, that's our tradition. So we've debated the treaty endlessly. What this does is just put that treaty into law. We've spent well over a year debating the detail of the treaty, all 585 pages of this. This just implements it. We've already but, debated it, in effect. But, but there's, a, there's a trust issue here, isn't there? Because a, a lot of MPs don't fully trust Boris Johnson to... Uh, to, to manage this process well, and the, to take the UK out. Would you accept issue. that? There's a bigger trust issue, which is that the public no longer trust MPs. Look, the Emperor has no clothes. It's now nakedly obvious that half the House of Commons will never vote for us to leave the EU under any circumstances, eventually we'll get a general election, and those MPs who've been trying to keep us in the EU will have to answer to their constituents. Many of them, I suspect, will not be coming back. Just a final question, Marc Francois. If um, various amendments are voted for that Boris Johnson, that makes Boris Johnson think, well, you know, the deal that he uh, negotiated with the EU is no longer tenable, what happens then? Will there be a push for a general election, uh, a motion of no confidence? Well, ultimately, that's up to the Prime Minister. I suspect if we cannot break the logjam, if MPs in, in, in that place vote yet again to keep us in the EU, because that's what they'd be doing, because this bill takes us out, if they kill this bill and keep us in the EU, we'll have to have a general election to break the logjam, and then those people who voted against the referendum will have to go back to their constituencies, look their constituents in the eye, and explain to their constituents why they voted to keep us in the EU deliberately. Um, a moment of quiet for that final answer. Marc Francois, thank you very much.